when you're working out, when you're working out, it just takes time to grow your body. When you're doing your business, it just takes time to grow your income. It just time has to elapse and no amount of tension and impatience is going to help with that. It's never going to help. Just got to do the time, stay the course and grow yourself. Like when I'm working out now, <clears throat> see, I, I actually just lost 15 pounds. I gained it back. Thankfully, uh, I had the, the stomach flu in Brazil during my South America trip, 15 pounds of muscle gone. It was a bad feeling. And on top of that, I hadn't really been working out too hard um, over in over in South America. So when I came back, I almost forgot what it was like to even use my body. It was super weird. But I remembered that. I remembered that growth just takes time. And so as I was working out, I would just think to myself, I'm just growing my body. Like this, these feelings, I wasn't used to them anymore, but hey, I'm just, I'm growing my body. I'm just growing my body. I just keep telling myself that over and over. I'd imagine my body growing. And if you follow these Instagram accounts, like Jailhouse Strong, it's best, Insta best Instagram ever. You guys should follow it. It's my favorite one. Jailhouse Strong. They talk about how 50% of, uh, of working out is just imagining your body, how you want it to be which is really interesting, right? Uh, but that's what they talk about in cyber cybernetics. Psycho cybernetics is the people who can see something as well as do something, they have infinitely more success achieving it. Whereas if you just do the action, but you don't imagine it how you want it to be, then it, it's like a very, very high failure rate, even though you're doing the same actions. It doesn't make any sense, right? Like say you're shooting a basketball, your form could look exactly the same, but as soon as you, uh, as soon as you're just doing, you're focused on the form, you're focused on the technique versus focusing on the ball going through the net. It's a totally different result. And, um, one of my mentors, he used a great example. I never watched star Wars, but this was the example was that, um, I think it was, uh, Yoda was coaching Luke Skywalker on how to use the force. And I could be wrong. I never watched star Wars, but, but the point was, was, uh, he was trying to teach Luke how to pick up a glass with his mind and uh, Yoda was doing it easily. And then Luke couldn't do it. And Luke was like, I can't, I can't figure it out. I'm doing all the things you're saying. I just, I'm doing all the steps, but it's just not happening. And Yoda says, focus on the goal, not the task. Which is another way of saying, don't focus on the mechanics so much. The mechanics are what naturally happen when you're so focused on the goal and you believe you can get the goal, you naturally fall in line with the right mechanics. Actually, if you study the right mechanics, the, the right thing to do is to uh, try to reverse engineer why those mechanics take place. So a level one type of question, and this is, hey, I did this, everyone's going to do this, all right? So if you did this, it's not putting you down, but a level one type of question when you do the business is, what do you say in this situation? What did you say to close that person? What did you say to get that deal? You know, what did you say to your teammate? What did you say? People are focused on the words. Okay, that's fine. But really what you want to do is get down to the, the root cause of where did those words come from? What caused you to say those things in the first place? When you figure that out, now you have the core. And what you're really trying to develop is that core that in the infinite amount of situations that could happen in this universe you can be at the right core to have the right output come to get the goal you want. So um, didn't plan on talking on all that, but that actually leads perfectly into the training that I want to give today. The training I want to give today, it's a very interesting one. It's the psychology of leadership, but through charisma alone, through charisma alone. So the reason why that's important is because you have a lot of leaders say in sports or in the business world, and, uh, and, and the number one way to be a leader, and this is what everyone should focus on, this is all I ever focused on, was leading through results. That's the only thing I ever wanted to focus on and that anyone should focus on, because that's really what counts. But um, what you'll notice is you can actually somewhat hijack and get the results of a leader, truthfully, without even being one, if you master charisma correctly. Um, and charisma is really what's going to get you good at the doors and get you good at business, get you good at life, because you don't have time to have people know who you are when you knock on a door. All they're going to see is you, right? 
Um, so I'm going to jump right into it with the number one thing that everyone should focus on, which is that the customer and your teammates and everyone believes what you believe. All right. They believe what you believe. And I'll tell you guys a story about that. So when I was in college, uh, there was this homeless guy and he lived outside of my apartment complex, literally just lived outside of it. And I would see him and I just would say, what's up? To I saw him every day. So I'd be like, what's up, man? His name was Nature. Um, so keep in mind, he's homeless. Like he's not a good looking homeless guy. This guy is as homeless as homeless gets. But one day he opens his little book up. He had this like random little book and he's showing me these engineering drawings about how we can have the whole city of Tallahassee be completely sustainable or something like really wild and like really awesome. And I'm sitting here looking at this and he is so convicted as he's talking to me. It made perfect sense to him. He's like, yeah, all we have to do is this, this and this. And he was always so in his reality. And then when he was talking about this, it made perfect sense to him. His certainty was a 10 out of 10 that me and my friend who were looking at this were thinking, dude, we got to get this guy to a city council so we can you know, put this guy in front of somebody. Meanwhile, we, we have no idea. Me and my friend have no idea how engineering works or if any of this stuff is right at all. But nature, the homeless guy who has the opposite of credibility, this guy's, this guy's homeless has convinced me and my friend that this is what we should do with the city of Tallahassee. Now, that is the epitome of they believe what you believe, okay? Nature was so certain in his message that it didn't matter if he was homeless, if he was ugly, or if he stank. We wanted to help get him to the city council, right? Now, imagine if you don't have negative credibility on your side, it just makes it 100 times easier. A lot of us in this business, we're decent looking, we're well, we're well spoken, we're well dressed. So you don't even have things going against you. About the only thing you have going against you is that you're knocking on a door, which no matter how you cut it, that puts you at a disadvantage. So you have to know that coming into the game is that, hey, I am knocking on a door. So I, I'm coming off looking desperate just off the rip. So you have to actually overcompensate for that. Now, a negative example of they believe what you believe is I just got sold. Uh, well, I shouldn't even say I got sold. <laughs> um, I bought a, a PMF, PEMF mat and a QI shield. It's something to do with grounding for, you know, making it seem like you're laying on the beach, uh, getting the magnetic waves of the earth. I'm, I don't know. I, I just figure if it gets me 1% better, I'll get it, right? But um, it's expensive. So I'm calling the salesperson. I'm trying to get hyped up about it. Like I'm, I want it to be real. So I'm calling the salesperson and there's no enthusiasm and they're sounding like they're just not giving me any certainty. And he's kind of just relaying information, but he's not giving me his true opinion. Now, here's the problem here is that I have no idea if this works. I have no idea how this thing works. I just need someone to be certain about it, to buy this thing. That's how our customers, I would say 90% of them are with solar. You have 10% of customers that think they know everything, right? Maybe, maybe a little more than 10% if we're being real. Uh, but let's just say that 10% think they know everything about everything, right? Okay, your conviction can still actually get them past and get them to do a deal with you. But then you have 90% of people that know that they have no idea, no idea about anything. They don't know what they don't know. And the only thing that they're going off of is what you believe. So keep that in mind that if you're not getting deals, it's usually a conviction issue. It's not, like, it's not that you don't know enough or that your sales lines are bad. It's that your certainty level needs to be higher, that there is no way this can hurt their situation, that you're purely just giving them something and that it's easy. And that's a big thing that you want to hypnotize your brain to think about is that it's not hard. It's easy. So that leads into the next topic that I have. Uh, before I do, does anyone have any uh, questions on that, comments on that? Check the chat real quick. Quantum energy. Thank you, Cole Willis, for sharing that. Okay. Um, all right. So that leads into the next thing. I want to shout out Tony Robbins, right? Because Tony Robbins was who taught me a lot of this. So Tony Robbins started out as a therapist. Now he's a motivational, life-changing person. He gets paid ungodly amounts of money to coach the best athletes in the world one-on-one. -on -one. Like he's a just a true performance coach. But before him, uh, and what a lot of therapists still do, 
is therapists would try to get down on the level of the cl- of the patient to try to help them out. So for example, I was watching this documentary this week and it was based on people with really, really bad anxiety or OCD disorders. This one girl could not even go into an elevator because she was so afraid that the elevator was going to fall and crash and kill her. And that was just the start of it. She couldn't go on a subway. She couldn't go anywhere in public. She was wrecked. But these are like very easy things to do. It's like just go into the elevator, just go in the subway. Like it's not hard. It's not scary. You know, it's nothing. So this therapist, what she would do, and this was, this was not helping at all, was whenever she was trying to get the client to go into the elevator, she would be like, I know this is super hard. This is very, very scary. Very scary. I know what you're going through. I'm here for you. Um, you're doing great. This is, I know this is difficult. And she kept on repeating how this is hard, how this is scary. This client, if it had not been for this client to be so motivated to beat this fear, she would never have gotten in that elevator. It took her like half an hour to get in the elevator and even close the door. And, it, and she almost had a mental breakdown because the lady was like continuing to tell her, hey, this is hard. Hey, this is scary. Now, what Tony Robbins does is the exact opposite. Tony sees the person being scared, sees the person being, um, you know, not in the right state of mind, boom, comes in with a ton of energy and doesn't care at all to be on the same rapport as the person that he's trying to help. He knows that for the person to get helped, they have to be in a completely different state that they're in now. So for example, this girl who couldn't get in the elevator, she can't believe that getting in the elevator is hard. That's going to make it harder. The girl has to believe that getting in the elevator is easy. Getting in the elevator happens all the time. This is completely normal. You don't even have to think about it. It's just the most normal thing in the world. Now, whenever I was like really on some hot streaks, and it's very important when you're on a hot streak to track how you're thinking and how you're feeling. When I was on my hottest hot streaks, I would always think to myself, I'm just doing my job. I'm not even doing anything. People would be like, what are you doing? What are you saying? Dude, I'm just doing my job. In other words, this is easy. So just like what Tony Robbins would have you do, in order to get into a state where your team does really good, your business does really good, you're getting tons of clients, you're getting tons of referrals, that has to become the new normal for you. That has to be thought of as easy. Whereas a lot of us think about this as it's hard, it's a grind, I have to battle all these objections. Think of it as this is easy, this is nothing. As long as you think about it like that, you're going to find that you're going to start to get there again, a lot easier because this really shouldn't be a hard business guys. Like if you look at the top producers, they say it on every single all hands call. I mean, you you find the correlation every single time they talk, Hey, I do the work. I stick to my habits. I get the results. It's really just that simple, but it takes getting that into your head a lot. And to reprogram a brain is, is, you know, I will say that is easier said than done but it is easy. You just have to actually do it. Does anyone have any questions or comments on that? Okay. All right. Here's, here's the, next, uh, the next thing to focus on as well as keeping it easy is to not make the customer more important than you. So this is something that we've been preached. We've been preached from a young age. The customer is always right. Okay. What really should be said is treat the customer with respect, right? Like don't, don't be rude to the customer. That's really what should be said, but we're taught the customer is always right. In other words, bow down to the Royal customer. Okay. I, the the number one people that are the hardest to train in this business are people that come out of uh, waiters and waitresses and customer service people. They are brutal to train at this business and they almost never get it because They are so drilled to be a servant that is so hard for them to lead. Um, So here's what you have to do. In order to be successful here, you have to take the customer off of the pedestal because you have to focus on you and your reality. Think about yourself as Tony Robbins helping helping a client, right? This client is in a state of mind that is closed minded that is negative, pessimistic, whatever it may be, you have to get them into your state in order to get a deal. This might include 
breaking report. This might include not mirroring and matching. You guys have heard about mirroring matching. If the customer is chill, you be chill. If the customer is mad, you be mad. Okay, sometimes that has a place, but most of the time you have got to be in your reality so rooted in that you put yourself first. Now, here's what's gonna happen. You put yourself first, you stay in your reality. The customer sees that you have real values that you have therefore value. If you have values, you have value. I'll say it again. If you have values, then you have value. So when you are sticking to your values and your life principles, no matter what is going on around you in your life circumstances, AKA a customer being hard, and they see you stick to the way that you wanna live, AKA not getting anxious, not getting scared, not getting angry, not getting flustered, not trying to just serve them, but just being how you want to be. They can see your value. And when they can see your value, that directly funnels right to seeing the deal's value. And then all of a sudden you can get a deal. But what happens most of the time, and you've really got to focus on this, is that things might not be going your way, or you look at this customer and maybe they're someone that looks like they're not going to do the deal and you just prejudge them in your head, right? Never prejudge. I've had, I've had customers that are 95 years old. I've had customers that look like they were just housewives. I've had customers that were scientists, doctors, engineers, all the, all the, you know, just any person in the world, young people, old people, medium people, it doesn't matter. Like everyone can be a customer, but maybe in your head, you've prejudged that they look like they're going to be a hard person and that you can't get this customer. Well, whenever things happen that are hard, what's tempting to do is to try to bend your values to try to appease them. Listen, as soon as you start to put them on that pedestal, you're done. Because here's what happens. There's two things that happens. Number one, they start to focus on themselves, not you, not your value, not your deal. You're focusing on them, so they focus on them. And when they focus on them, their ego gets involved. Now they're thinking, I'm too good for this door-to-door -door person. I should get the best deal. I should shop. I should research. All of a sudden, they become this expert because they're focused on, now, now their ego is all involved. Simultaneously, now they're not looking at you. So when they're not looking at you, they can't see your value. They can't see your deal. That's why it, it doesn't matter if it's in a relationship if it's with a business partner, if it's with a customer, you can't put people on a pedestal because it's not real, it's not accurate, and they, they will not be able to see your value and you're just gonna force them to look at themselves if that's what you do. This is the psychology behind it. So here's something I wanna add on top of that because at some point in your life, unless you're just some nihilistic weirdo, you're gonna have something in your life that you want like really bad. Like maybe it's a deal. Maybe it's money. Um, I don't know. It, it could be like literally anything. Right. And in that circumstance, it's going to be tempting to get like stifled and locked up and not be that carefree, fun, abundant, loving, honest, relaxed, abundant person that you are. Um, and instead you might feel tempted and like scared to like shrink up like, Oh, I don't want to lose this deal. I don't want to lose this situation. Right. So it would be great if we could just say, yeah, just always be that abundant person. But there are going to be times and the, the way to practice this is to be brave in any circumstance. So always go for what you want, but be brave and stick to your values no matter what you want. OK, like this is stuff that's kind of like common sense, but you have to really notice if you find yourself slipping and if you're not getting deals, focus on all right, and be self-aware. Am I in my reality or am I in the customer's reality? And you can always tell by your feeling. If you're not having fun, if you're not being carefree, if you're not being honest with yourself and just, you know, in, if you're not enjoying yourself, you're not in your reality. You're in the circumstances reality, AKA the customer. Well, here's what happens next. You start having fun. You start being carefree. Now there's another fear that comes in. This is the fear of losing deals of losing because of it. There's two things that you have to remember with this. The only way to win in the game of life is to play the game of life. So the only way to get the, the relationship you want, the money you want, 
the, the body you want. The only way to do it is to play the game, have fun, be in the carefree, be in abundant, be in loving all the, all those good things, all those positive things. But you have to be okay with losing. You're going to lose. Sometimes you li listen, you're not meant to mix with every single customer. That's not natural. Humans are not meant to mix with every single person. So just know that your values supersede winning. Paradoxically, when you stick to your values, no matter what, guess what you do? You win like crazy. You just become a constant, constant winner. My, the, I would say the hardest thing for Michael Jordan, like I watched his last dance documentary, the hardest thing for him was when everyone was telling him he was great, not to get caught up in people telling him he was great, but to stick to his values that he's trying to be the best version. He's trying to be perfect every single day. That's values, right? And he was thought of as the best long before he retired. He stayed and kept getting better because he just stuck to his values. Um, I'm going to stop there. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Just loving the energy, man. Loving it. It's speaking truth. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, this is this is advanced stuff. Um, listen, if you want the sales lines, first of all, we have like a million calls. You can hop on any one of them. Everyone's going to teach you sales lines. What got me to this level, and I'm not at the top or anything like that, but like what's gotten me to a place in life that is on the right path is this stuff right here. That's why I feel so passionately about it. But if you want the sales lines, always be on every call, but go into the Mighty Networks and there's a, um, a training manual. Go into the training manual. It's got every sales line you could want, okay? Um, and you can reverse engineer those. They're good to know. It's a great train. I wrote the training manual myself with Dean, you know? I, I, so I stand behind it. But I'm telling you guys right now, this stuff, mastering your values, mastering your principles and your way of life, it supersedes it by such a degree, it's not even measurable. So I'll leave you guys with this quote. Um, I, I, I heard this quote today, and I, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, this week, and I loved it. Uh, you cannot manifest what you want if your attention is on what is. I'll say it again. You cannot manifest what you want if your attention is on what is. In other words, if you're caught up in your circumstances, you can't manifest a new reality. So I'll shout out Senzo on this. I was hanging out with Senzo this week. He just, uh, he was top glass slapper of the month in December. He wasn't doing super great. I would say in like October, he called me. He's like, man, I, I feel like I'm not getting the recognition I deserve. I feel like I'm, I'm doing good, but like I, I should be doing better. I was like, remember me and him had both done this course called your wish is your command. I was like, remember your wish is your command. How you feel is going to dictate your reality, not the other way around. So feel as if you have all the deals in the world, feel as if you're getting the results that you want, as if you are the person that you want to be, be the person that gets the deals and then you'll get the deals. Well, he did it. The, 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 result, the results didn't come in like that, but he stuck with it, became top glass slapper, didn't abandon his values when it took a little longer than expected. That's it's a huge thing to, to look out for. When you start doing new things, guys, it's going to take a lot of conscious focus. And therefore, it's going to feel like it's taking a lot longer than it actually is. If you really think, if you really look at the time that you've spent doing, say, this business, it might feel like a whole year has gone by when maybe only a month has gone by. That's the perspective. It's so screwy like that. So um, two more quotes. You cannot manifest what, oh, hold on. You can, what did I write down? You cannot manifest what you, okay. You cannot manifest, I mistyped this. You cannot manifest what you want if you are focused on what they want from you, okay? You cannot manifest what you want if you are focused on what they want from you. So kind of like what we've been talking about the whole time, putting the deal, putting the deal, the customer, the money on this, this high, this high horse and your folk, how do I please this person? Okay. If you're focused on that, you're going to be thrown in a million different directions. Okay. You have to focus on what you want to therefore get what you want, which is the best thing in the world. That's why, that's why this universe is the best universe. Like the laws of this universe. Thank you God for making it this way that we don't have to try to 
figure out what someone else wants to get what we want. We do what we want. We give it to them how we want to give it to them, have our personality thrown in there. And then boom, we get the deals, right? We get the reality. We get the riches. You get to wake up every day with thousands and thousands of dollars of residual income coming into your bank account because there's installs going in every day and you built up a business that's lasted for decades. And last quote, the ancestor to every action is a thought. The ancestor to every action is a thought. So make sure your thoughts are positive. Don't sit there and explore negative thoughts. It's a waste of time. And, and don't, don't be thinking about deals nonstop, man. It makes you crazy. The number one way to put stuff on a pedestal is you obsess about it. Stop obsessing over what to say to customers and customers in general. Focus on your own reality. You know, get your have better thoughts and you'll have better actions and you'll have a better life. Appreciate you guys. Um, we have a question here. Uh, when not knowing what to say, will charisma carrying you? Oh, yes, absolutely. Great question. Um, Cole asks, when not knowing what to say, will charisma carry you? Uh, yes, it will. Because 93%, I think, 93% of communication is nonverbal. It's not verbal. <laughs> so we're, we're so focused on what to say, guys. But the reality is subcommunication is what's felt 93%. It's, what, it's what's felt the most. So your energy. Um, hey, you know what? Along the same lines, I'll, I'll, I'll share this with you guys, especially because I see uh, my boy Thon's in the group. Thank you for the compliment, Ethan. <laughs> I was in Peru and um, I don't speak any Spanish, right? Not a lick of it. And I met a great girl who didn't speak a lick of English. And we had a great, great night. And we didn't, we had just met each other. We communicated. We knew, we knew what we were thinking. We knew what we were talking. We didn't need to know the words. So same, listen, if you can, if you can speak English to a customer, which all of us can, thankfully, that's it. That's just game over. But you get your charisma down and you get your, your confidence and your, your reality down. And you don't sit there and try to serve them. And you just, you just, just give it to them, man. Like you, they're going to follow your lead. And then you just mix in some of the right words with it, which are the easy part. And yeah, the charisma can carry you, man. Last thing I'll say about that is just know that if you're trying to figure out what to say, you're already in the wrong state um, because you're coming from a state of what do I say to get something? You, sh you, you just, you gotta, if you're trying to get results, you have to come from the state of, I already have everything, even if it's not true. You have to come from that state if you want the results. So don't worry. Yeah. Scarcity mindset. Yeah. The, the abundant, the abundant frame is I can do, I can do whatever I want. I can say whatever I want and I can get whatever I want. And that actually is the truth. I'm telling you guys, that is the truth. You have to have faith that that is how the laws of the universe work. It doesn't matter what you look like. like. Literally nothing matters. It doesn't matter if you're homeless or anything. It doesn't matter. If you live that way, it, the, the world will respond that way. Because the way you see yourself and the way you see the world is how the world's going to see you. The world is your mirror. So anything you do is the right answer because it's coming from you. Thank you, guys. Any other questions, comments, or observations? All right. With that, God bless. Let's have a great week, guys. Have fun. Keep pushing it. Stay in your reality. Let's go.